Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The U.S. Air Force has to transport troops, equipment, and supplies to aid military operations around the world. For this purpose, they use large cargo planes with massive payload capacity, unlike other aircraft in their arsenal. So how does the USAF load and offload cargo on these monster-sized aircraft? Let's find out. The C-5 is the largest aircraft in the Air Force inventory. It is distinct for having both front and rear cargo ramps. The cargo can be loaded and offloaded from either side of the C-5. It can lift two self-propelled artillery vehicles, such as a Paladin a 30 feet long and 10 feet wide heavily armored tracked vehicle. To load a Paladin via the rear ramp of a C-5, the crew sets up a wooden surface for the tank to incline and enter the cargo compartment smoothly. The C-5 can kneel on its landing gear to facilitate the loading operations. The aircraft lowers itself to present the cargo deck at truck bed height, almost six feet off the ground. When the C-5 is not kneeling, the ramp from the deck to the ground has a crown at the top. This prevents wheeled vehicles from driving into the cargo compartment as they high center on the crown. However, when the C-5 is kneeling on its landing gear, the wheeled vehicles can easily enter the cargo compartment. The United States Air Force uses C-5 aircraft to transport helicopters to different locations. Initially, the crew sets up a ramp and loads the AH-64 onto the aircraft. The helicopter is then moved to a location where it utilizes minimum space in the C-5 cargo compartment. To unload an AH-64, the crew sets up three wooden surfaces, one each for its front and back tires combined. The AH-64 is moved out from the same end it was loaded. A crew member monitors the placement of its wheels on the wooden surface till the AH-64 is finally on the ground. It is dragged out of the cargo compartment using a tow bar. In addition to transporting tanks and helicopters, the C-5 is also used to transport the James Webb Space Telescope. However, before loading the telescope onto the cargo compartment, it is kept safe inside the Space Telescope Transport, Air, Rail, and Sea, or STARS, container. The container is transported from the facility to the C-5 aircraft via a truck. A 
A team of engineers set up wooden surfaces diligently under the container while loading them onto the C-5 Super Galaxy transport aircraft. After loading the cargo on a C-5, the pilots start the engine and ask permission to taxi. On busy airports, where several aircraft are taxiing around, moving a C-5 is not an easy task. The C-5 has to taxi out its way to the runway carefully. The C-5 Galaxy takes off in the same way as a traditional transport aircraft. After taking off, the wheels are retracted into the wheel well to reduce drag. The C-5 has retractable tricycle-type landing gear. It is fitted with Oleo pneumatic dual-chamber shock absorbers, carbon disc brakes, and Goodrich wheels. These tires can be deflated mid-air depending upon the landing conditions at the destination airfield. The C5 features four main landing gear units fitted in tandem pairs. Each unit incorporates a six-wheel bogey with two wheels forward and four wheels rear of the shock absorber. Whereas the four-wheeled nose gear is equipped with robust, hydraulically driven ball screw units to retract backward. A hydraulically driven gear system rotates the main units through 90 degrees for inward retraction. The nose gear can be rotated through a 120 degree frontal arc. This provides a ground turning radius of 22.10 meters about the nose wheel and 52.12 meters about the wingtip. Due to its unique landing gear system, the C5 Galaxy can land anywhere around the world. It requires a landing distance of 4,900 feet at maximum gross weight. While landing, the speed of the C5 Galaxy reduces from Mach 0.77 at the peak to 135 knots at 1,500 meters from the ground. Once landed, it is tough to stop a C5 because of its size and weight. To overcome this problem, the pilots sometimes apply reverse thrust to decelerate the C5. On the brakes gently, guys. Out of reverse. In the 1980s, the U.S. Air Force started to develop C-17 aircraft to replace the aging C-141 Starlifter and fulfill some of the duties of the C-5 Galaxy. The C-17 made its maiden flight on September 15, 1991. The C-17 Globemaster III is extensively used to deploy troops and equipment to combat outposts in a war zone. A 
Additionally, the C-17 transports aviation fuel in fuel bladders. Initially, the crew sets up fuel bladder systems inside the C-17's cargo compartment. Fuel technicians precisely monitor gasoline fumes that linger in the cargo bay. It takes about four days to prepare and inspect the system before delivery. The fuel technicians secure the fuel bladder connector before transferring the fuel. The JP-8 jet fuel is transferred via the HEMTT fuel servicing truck. The truck can transfer about 2,500 gallons of jet fuel. The pump operator remains alert to terminate the transfer in case of an emergency. It takes about 20 minutes to fill around 50,000 gallons of fuel bladder. The fuel technicians adjust the restraint straps to prevent surge, roll, or shift in weight distribution. The total weight of the fuel is reported back to the pilot. Over the years, the United States Air Force has supplied fuel to various combat outposts. In January 2011, Three C-17 Globemaster III's dropped the largest resupply of fuel ever to a remote military outpost in Afghanistan. Soldiers hustled for two days to secure 20,000 gallons of fuel. The shipment contained a 30-day supply of JP-8 fuel. Each C-17 aircraft dropped 40 bundles, with each pallet housing four 55-gallon drums of fuel. C-17 is capable of refueling mid-air with the help of KC-135. The KC-135 Stratotanker has been a core aerial refueling aircraft for the USAF for over 60 years. C-17 approaches the KC-135 at a steady speed to receive the fuel. The aircraft separate their paths after conducting aerial refueling. Effective coordination among airmen is essential for smooth loading operations. They have to understand their roles, responsibilities, and specific requirements for each type of cargo. These hardworking men and women work together as a team to execute each step efficiently. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.